So welcome to everyone here today and uh, of course welcome to our visitor, lovely to meet you and uh, we'll get to know you far more over the refreshments at the end of the service. Uh, just a reminder of our weekly activities that are going on. Tonight we've got our gospel service which is happening every Sunday, 6 till 7pm in the Salvation Army Church on Ipswich Street. If you want to come, please yeah. do. Wednesday, Powerhouse Gospel Service, 12 to 1, in the uh, week, every Wednesday, same location. And we are seeing about 20 to 30 regularly coming now. And uh, we're seeing growth there, which is wonderful. Uh, Wednesday evenings, Bible study, 6 till 7, same location every Wednesday, youth Bible studies and adult Bible studies. And we're seeing a couple of youth really firing on, ready for when we invite all the schools in the area. So we're expecting a deluge in September. Please hold that in prayer. The Worship Academy, uh, Thursday, 6.30 till 8.30. Again, same location. We're doing lots of partnering with that church. And that is the opportunity for youth band, worship band, and the community choir that's forming. Friday, the luncheon club, 12 p.m. start, two to three pound per head. We're seeing um, a number of people, about 15, 16 on Friday. We've only just started it, and uh, we're covering the cost and giving a gospel message and leading people to the Lord. Saturday, every second Saturday, the evangelism that we're doing in Redditch, uh, that is this Saturday. We meet at 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. Do please come outside St. Stephen's Church, sharing the Word of God, allowing God's Word to do what it's done uh, since day dot, and expecting God to move in this town. And then every fourth Saturday, 9 a.m. till 10 a.m., we meet at St. Stephen's Church and prayer walk around Redditch. Prayer, the Word, fellowship, and community, bringing everything together and living as one. We're seeing God really move in this place. Brian, would you be good enough to open the service in prayer, please? There's only six verses, so I think maybe a verse each and we'll read around the congregation, give a few people a chance to share. I'll start Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Verse 2. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy, and it was, it was said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Three. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Yes. Yeah. Restore our fortunes, Lord, yes. and strengthen in the desert. Verse 5. May those who sow in tears reap the shouts of joy. Six. 
He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a song. And in that gladness, we're now going to move into a time of worship. If you're able to, stand on your feet, keep your finger in Psalm 126, and let us praise the Lord with our first song, 10,000 Reasons. The numbers are on the board at the front.
numbers on the board.
belong to our God. He just been thought true and just. He had punished the great prostitute who corrupted the earth and moved from humanity. He has avenged the murders of his state. Hallelujah. And again, their voice, he finally gave tried to the Lord to smoke from their city yep. and send forever and ever. Then the twelve, then the twenty-four hours of the following feast, now down the words of God, who sits on the throne, I cry, Amen, cry the Lord. And from the throne they have a voice, cry to our God, all his servants, all who free, from the least to the greatest, shall I hear of their God, a vast crowd. And the roar of their voices, cry the Lord, the Lord our God, the Almighty Man. Let us be glad and yeah. rejoice. Give honour to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. And that's not very hard, right? The Lamb plays the Lord's not. And the bride has prepared herself. She has given Jesus. the finest of truths. The thing to wear. For the finest thing it represents the good deeds of, our, of God's holy people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The Thank time has come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are nearer Hallelujah. now than when Hallelujah. we first believed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Nearer Amen. now than when we first believed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bring it soon.
for God took him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Walk humbly with your God. Yes. Oh, may we walk humbly yes, with you. Pride is the root of all sin. Pride. Pride. Walk humbly with thy God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're there beside us. Yes, Lord. Friend. Yes. Friend. Bless you, Lord. I'd like us to just take a moment to look around us. Roy and Zami have given apologies today. Mm -hmm. Steve and Sarah are ministering elsewhere. Fiona, Dino, Paul, yeah. and uh, someone else that was coming with them. Scott and Beverly, that, um, Scott and uh, Catherine, sorry, that were going to come with their family. Uh, Esther and her children. James, who's ill. Yeah. Am I missing someone? Maybe. Uh, Cynthia. Cynthia as well. No, thank you. Cynthia. So we're so many people down today, but I'd just like each and every one of us to take one of those names that we just called out yes. and pray over that family, yeah. that household, yeah. or that individual. We just mentioned a few. Yeah. If I'm missing anyone, add them into our prayers and anything else. That thank God's laying on your heart. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you today because we're part of a body, we're part, Lord, of a, a vast body of people, Lord, in this town and this nation. We thank you, Lord, that we're thinking particularly, Lord, today of those who gather with us. Some, Lord, on holiday, we realise all of the schools still are being uh, in vacation, Lord, that many of them are not here as often as they would like to be. But, Father, we're just mindful of, of Esther and, and, and the poor children, Lord. We pray for, for them today, that we bless them, whatever they are. I think you do think of Cynthia, Lord, wanting to find a way to come, Lord, and not sure yet how it's going to happen, but Lord, we, we thank you, Father, for everyone, and for Roy and Zami and all of those, Lord, who would normally gather with us. Father, we pray, you are with them, Lord, as you're with us. You've been singing this morning, Lord, Father God, you're there beside us, but you're there beside them as well, Lord, they are your children. And though we miss them, Lord, think of Steve and Sarah as well. And some may come along tonight, Lord, we pray that some of them might be having the opportunity to come to the gospel service, Lord, if they're ministering elsewhere. But Lord, we look to you. And we thank you, Father, that you're mindful of our needs. We thank you, Lord, that you're a good God. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God of power, a God of might. But you're also a God of grace and mercy. And Lord, we do pray to that. Let your church rejoice. Let your people rejoice in God their Saviour. Lord, we pray that our hearts and our, our voices might be lifted to you today. It's for all of what happened in the week. We rejoice in your goodness. Bless them as well as you're blessing us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we praise you, Lord. Oh, Father God, so many of our brothers and sisters missing, Lord, from this place today, Lord. But, Lord, we know that we need to do, Father We know, Lord, that you are first in their hearts, Father. Jesus, Jesus. Through illness and through being in other places of worship, Father God, they cannot be with us. Yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, 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 let us let them know that we love you dearly, Father. Yes, and let them know, Lord, that they are never alone, because we are never alone, Lord, because you yes, are there walking beside us. Let them know. Yes, Lord. And Lord, as we need them know, the foot of your cross, Lord, where you died for us, at Calvary, yes, Lord, a sinner such as I, Father God. Lord, we worship and we praise you. And Lord, the day that we came to know you, Father God, was the best day of our lives, Father God. And our lives, our lives, Lord, will never ever be the same again, Lord. We know that, Lord. Yes, Lord. We know that, Lord. Yeah. And you take us, Lord, along this pathway now to a better life, Lord. And Lord, one day we will be with you. We will be in the heavens with you, Father God. And we thank you, Lord. You're there for us. You're there for us to call out to, Lord, any time, any night, Lord. In the darkness of the night, Lord, you're there. You're there to hold on to, Lord. We can lift our hand, Lord, and know you're coming on to us, Father God. That we're, we're safe, Lord, and we're protected, Lord, because you're there and you're there in our lives, Father God. And we love you unconditionally, Father God, as you love us, Father I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise your lovely name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. We praise your lovely name. In you we live and move and have our being. Yes. You're not far from any one of us. No, you're not. We reach out and we find Amen. you. Amen. 
I pray for Cynthia, Lord. Yeah, I right. pray that she will feel yeah. the touch of your hand yes, upon her life. Yeah, bless her, Lord. Even as we pray, yeah. even as we agree on her, may it be done for us in heaven. Thank you, that she will be surprised yes. by joy. Hallelujah. That she will feel yes, the yes, touch yes. of your hand upon yeah. her life. Yeah. The joy of the Lord that makes us rich has no sorrow in yes. it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Really, bless Lord, I Lord. thought about it this morning. She crossed my mind, and here she is mentioning herself. Yeah, bless you, Lord. Thank you. Cynthia, wherever she is, yeah. she would love to be here, yeah, yeah, sat yeah. in this chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. And unto yes, the Lord, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Hear our prayer, and then our cry come unto thee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thou that hearest prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, thou that answerest prayer. Yes, praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That Sarah and Steve and sweet, lovely little Grace, <laughs> may they also feel your, your, the touch of your hand upon their life. Oh, Lord Jesus, you pray. Move on the voice. Surprised by joy. Ooh. Hallelujah. Surprised by joy. Yeah. Someone must be praying for me. Hallelujah. I feel blessed. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, someone, somebody's praying for me. Yeah. We agree. It true. Agree on earth. It will be done for us in yes. heaven. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We're not asking for a scorpion. No, no. We're asking for fish. Hallelujah. We're, we're not asking for a stone. Amen. We're asking for bread. Hallelujah. Asking Bless. For we are one body. We're baptized by one spirit into one body. Yes, we belong you. to one another. Thank you, Jesus. We are siblings. Yes, we are. Siblings. Brothers and sisters. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are our Father. And Lord, we pray for dawn at this time. We thank you for the glimpse of fellowship that we had this morning picking up the amp blood and having a photocopy and a quick chat lord we just pray that you'll move mightily through her and through the assembly and the church there lord we pray that you will be glorified and magnified and we just pray for all the hearts minds and souls in that place to be encouraged and stirred to join us this evening as we partner to extend your kingdom to this town. Lord, we just pray that as we throw those doors open and all the passers-by today, the inquirers may come in and receive you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Although we're small in number, Lord, we pray that we may be found with our um, hands to the play, Lord. And we just pray that you will be directing everything we do and we will see many men, women and children bow the knee and proclaim you as Lord and Saviour. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I just share something yesterday? Please do. Uh, what did you say to me? Someone had sent me a text on my, on my phone um, saying, I've been praying for you this morning mm. because I felt that you needed prayer. And the Lord bless you today. That's all I have. Mm. Nothing but that. And to be honest, I, don't, I didn't recognize the number. So I don't know who it was. Whoever it was, if it's anybody here, then I'll say thank you. If it wasn't anybody here, then bless them here. It's just nice sometimes just to know that some. And, and Roy was on his own. He always sends me a message every day. Um, he always sends me a little text and message that I acknowledge it. But it's just nice to know that somebody sent me a message saying, I'm crying for you today because I, uh, I, I, feel, it, I feel the need. It was a very trying I spent. The day is with two awful people, but four awful people. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
we do send this message out and there are families that watch the uh, video so although we haven't got children in today we can come unto the lord like little children inquiring and sucking up what god is telling us and i pray you'll speak through this uh, slot now but whilst we prepare ourselves for me to tell a, a, a little story jack and Ori style and no. um, i'd like this to go around if possible i'd like you to take a pencil each a post-it note each and i'll explain what we're going to do with it could you possibly uh, take one and pass them out please one post-it note each and one pencil as we turn to the word of god in these parable stories so today we're going to talk about the merchant and the pearl i'm sure very familiar to all of us but I'll read it through and can, um, conclude. The most important thing in the world, said Jesus, is being friends with God. What do you do if something is very important? Listen to this story. There was once a merchant. He travelled far and wide to find the best pearls. One day, he had the chance to buy an amazing pearl. It was big, it was pure white, it was perfectly round, it was very expensive. The merchant knew it was the most valuable pearl in the world. He went off and sold all the pearls he had. Then he came back and bought the pearl that he really loved. Praise God. Amen. Such a simple message, but going out and actually giving out all for God, for Jesus, and the saving grace that is offered to each and every one of us. Yeah. Casting away everything else that would hinder or get in the way in order to know Jesus and to cleave to God. Do we hear that said very often these days? Yeah. To cleave to God and to have that partnership, to be yoked with Jesus Christ and everything he would desire of us. And then it goes into the other aspect of if you've got those pearls, don't cast them before swine. Oh. Hold on to what you've got. Nurture what you've got. Grow what you've got and share it with others. But do not cast your pearls before swine. And it links into what David was saying as well. When someone finds something so precious and makes it the centre of their lives, i.e. Jesus Christ, there is a change, there is a distinction, and there is a... Um, a new creature developing. And I pray that that is the case with all of us. As we find that pearl, that wisdom, that touch of God, we may put it first and foremost in our lives and tell many. And as often I do, we've got a Good News newspaper later for everyone to take, to read, Testimonies of what God has done in the lives of many and an opportunity to share it with someone and say, come along tonight to the gospel service. And wouldn't it be lovely if our number today, and I think most of us will be there, if our number here today were in that gospel service tonight, raising the roof and praising God and seeing many more come as we share God's word with them. Praise God. Now, the activity, if I could call it that, you've got a post-it note. Always dangerous when someone who does some children's work uh, gives you yeah. some post-it notes and pencils. What I'd like you to do is to write, oh, we've even had some of the collection come in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, we'll do that after, no worries. <laughs> So I'll take uh, these bits and pieces out, the collection can stay there. Um, what I'd like you to do 
is to write your name on the post-it note. Your name, simple as that. So, first name, uh, second name, I think our visitor today, am I right to think it's Paul? Gary. Gary, Gary sorry, oh, apologies. The Gary knows. I was going to say, yeah. So, I don't think we've got anyone with the same name, but write your name and surname if you're happy to. I'm going to pop that there for a moment. So, write your name. That's it, just your name. Martin, Sophie, Jeff, Gary, Paul, Liz, Chris, David, Brian, Joe, I haven't done mine, have I? No. And uh, Fiona. Could someone write down Fiona's for her, please? Yeah. And what I'd like you to do is to fold that piece of paper up. So no one can see the names on it, ideally. Have you not got one of this? Okay. There you go. If you write yours down, that'd be great. And we're just going to send the basket round. Uh, you can put the pencils back in now if you want, and the uh, the names. Um, yeah, it's lovely. Someone's written uh, Fiona down as well. And I can see the trepidation on people's faces now, thinking he's going to pick my name out and he's going to get me to do uh, dress up in a silly costume or something. No, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I've dressed up in a silly costume. Thank you. Send set up. What's the old adage? I don't have to come here to be insulted, I can go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big insult as well. Probably. That's it, yeah. that's a big <laughs> So a bit more speed, whack your name down, fold it up and uh, send it back round to the rest of the uh, flock, please. And we've spoken today that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are family. So what I'm going to do in a second You'll think, what a silly thing. And I'll explain all. Is yours in, David? Yeah? Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Now, we are brothers and sisters in the faith. And I don't want to sound too uh, dramatic, because I'm sure we pray for each and every person in this congregation. Mm-hmm. However, in a moment, we're going to send this round. And I'd like you to pick one out. And whoever you pick out, I'd like you to focus so much prayer on that person. Saturate them in prayer over this coming week and weeks. And I'd like to even go one step further. If your brother or sister, because I've got a few, I'd like you to maybe think of giving them something next week, a gift. Something maybe that you've used, a, a book that's blessed you a CD, uh, a DVD, etc. I'd like you to actually physically bring something next week for the person that you pull out of here and give them a blessing. Bookmark, book, CD, DVD, anything. Write them a letter, write them a poem, a song. It doesn't have to cost you anything. Bake them a cake. I'd like you to actually physically saturate that person in prayer and bless them. Joe? Yeah? What if we draw our own name out? If now, you draw what's your... the significance of that in God's name? Yeah, very good question. If you draw your own name, pop it back in. So check, pull it out. If you uh, draw your own name, pop it back in before you hand it on. But the chances of that are quite slim, I think, with the number of us. Oh, sorry, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, well, if you draw your own name out, you can take yourself out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. Buy yourself a nice treat. Oh, okay. And Fiona, for that comment, if you pull yourself out now, you can take us all out for a bit, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but no, good. And I'd like you to, not only, um, we pray for each other, of course, in the assembly, and we are a very welcoming, loving, warm church. But I'd like you to really saturate and bless. It's fine, I think. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
I don't want to miss myself out. I'm going to come on back in because uh, I've got a lot of mine. Are you genuinely? Yeah. Okay, um, I'll tell you what then. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. 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 Snap. Do you see the No, we sit that would be tight by the looks of it. You said put it back in. <laughs> yeah, look, we passed it round, haven't we? Oh, we don't want to get them. <laughs> right. Um, so I'd like you to absolutely saturate that person in prayer. And like I say, give them a gift, a book, a CD, DVD, bake them a cake, write, write them a poem, a song, anything yeah. that right. would just bless them. Take them out to lunch or dinner. Yeah, have a coffee so with them. That for us. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. That's so crazy. Now, Jeff, have you got your uh, the Word of God? You've got your Bible? No. Okay. Martin, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, please. David, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. Who else? Oh, Gary, thank you. Uh, John chapter 4, verses 35 to 38. We're going straight into the Word of God. Luke 10. Uh, Luke 10, 1 to 3 for you. Matthew 9, 35 to 38 for Martin. Gary, John 4, 35 to 38. Um, Martin, could I ask you to stand and just read it over the assembly, please? Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Yes. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Fantastic, thank you. David, Luke 10, 1 to 3, please. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the labourers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest. To send out labourers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. Thank you. And Gary, please, John chapter 4, verses 35 to 38, please. Do you not say, Four months more, and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages, even now he harvests the crop for eternal life. Yeah. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Yes. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labour. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. So today's talk, few minutes that we're going to share today, is bringing in the sheaves. Now. I'm often touched by an Anglo-Catholic church I go to that has at the front of the church sheaves. I don't think they understand the significance, but the sheaves and bringing in the sheaves. And the song, very well known song I'm sure, but not in our books unfortunately. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, Sowing in the noontide and the dewy eaves, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, Fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labour ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Go then, though with weeping, sowing for the master, Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. When our labour's over, he will bid us welcome 
We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. What a song. And if we feel led, we could sing that later. It's in that hymn book. But anyway, rereading Psalm 126 that we started off with today, verses 5 to 6. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Praise God. So four points that we're going to consider today are sowing, reaping, harvest and workers. That's sowing, reaping, harvest and workers. Based on our readings from Matthew 9, 35 to 38, Luke 10, 1 to 3 and John 4, 35 to 38. And I've already said, sowing. As Christians, we should be hardwired. It should be our raison d'etre to tell others about what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. We should sing it from the rooftops. We should uh, proclaim it in the highways and the byways, on every street corner, in the marketplace. And, well, where's our marketplace in this town? The corners by where we meet on Saturday, 10 till 12, we will be proclaiming the Word of God alongside sects that are out there, other groups that are starting to try and take God's ground. And, let me say, we'll pray them out. We'll pray them out and we'll trust that God will remove the dross and his word will go forth and change hearts, minds and souls of men, women and children. But, it's only going to happen if we go out carrying that seed. We will only bring in the sheaves if we go out and carry the seed. Maybe these good news newspapers, as I say, week in, week out. What it would look like if we multiplied, doubled this congregation today for this evening service and then doubled again. And you might be thinking, well, can't do that. But you can. The fields are white unto the harvest, but the labourers are few. Because the labourers, and I'm not beating anyone here, we're a very active church, but the labourers are few and far between. A hundred thousand homes, roughly, or a hundred thousand population in our town. Calling it our town, mate. Our town. And how many can we count as Christians in this town? And we had this conversation the other day, myself and David. And if we were to number a thousand people, maybe, at a a real push, a thousand people, what's that harvest for each and every one of us? One hundred. You know, it's like the... Uh, ratio of being uh, one of the brave 300 almost. The hordes, the hordes around us and to actually stand firm with the word of God, with the sword of truth and proclaim, so and um, proclaim God's truths to those hundred. And each individual's house. That's it, every home for Christ. It's multiplication. It is. So, each and every seed falling onto the mats of people, knocking on the door, speaking to those people. And again, I'm echoing something that has been birthed in prayer already. We're mobilising to get a hundred people sometime next year to do those thousand homes each. But we could start before. We could each of us today reach five, ten people on our streets 
in our households, in our communities, and what that would look like if we did. And the sewing, we can do this through a number of ways, through our witness, as we walk through the town, as those changed, redeemed and saved creatures. We have a witness as the world looks at us. And we've spoken in the last few weeks about one or two um, that are on the fringe of our community, letting that witness down. But a witness walking through the town, proclaiming Jesus and relationally getting alongside those people that need to know him as Lord and Saviour. Through our evangelism, gossiping the gospel, telling the good news of Jesus over a coffee, uh, relationally as we're hopefully going to um, engender a bit more of that in the assembly, taking one another out for a meal, a coffee, you know, blessing each other um, with text, um, encouragement and prayer throughout the week. Yeah. And our testimony, telling all and sundry what Jesus has done in our lives, yeah, sure. our story from being pulled from the miry pits into his saving grace oh, and yeah. glory. Without going back into the 80s, sowing the seeds of love, God's love, and sowing them forth and bringing that harvest forth. Yeah. Preaching the proclamation in and around the town, the highways, the byways, the marketplaces, the social media, the internet, all those avenues that we've got to even just lazily sit in the comfort of our own armchair, but proclaim the gospel. To phone all our friends and say, I haven't spoke to you for a while, let me tell you what Jesus is doing in my life. Just going through that phone directory, texting everyone. I went to church today. I mean, you might say I'm an awful preacher, but yeah. I went to church yeah. today and God really stirred me up. Come tonight, join me at Ipsley Street for the gospel service. And teaching people, bringing the word of God into the lives, the hearts and the homes of many every home for Christ, blessing a household with a Bible and saying to them, here's a Bible, but come on Wednesday where we have a Bible study, learn how to grapple with this text, with this living word, and live it out in your own life. Disciple them, root them in the word of God, and dare I say, healings that we read about. On Friday, we had the luncheon, and on the close of the luncheon, we had two people. Um, we didn't offer prayer at that point. We often do, when every opportunity. They said, would you pray for us? And we said, of course we would. And anointed with oil, as we do, the uh, elders came around, and one individual said, oh, I can feel warmth. Yes. I can feel the touch of God. And we said, great, come Sunday evening. They couldn't come this morning. We said, come this Sunday evening, and maybe we'll have testimony tonight. Then a, a chap said, oh, could you pray for me? And we said, of course we can. And uh, a limb was removed like that. He said, the limb's gone. He said, I'm warm. And I said, I said, tell everyone, limb, sorry, yeah, limb. You know, like a, and um, I said, well, tell everyone. And I said, bring them. Sunday evening, and also he's coming into some other fellowship things that we're doing. So, healings as well. But we're told in Scripture, those who sow in tears, even if I can take it this far, blood, sweat and tears. It can be a real toil, it can be a real hardship to be out in the streets professing the Word of God in today's world and society. Don't mishear me, one of the greatest joys to be out there. But it's hard, isn't it, to get up early when sometimes it's not our normal pattern. To find that extra bit of time, and I mean there are some, some of us in the congregation that are absolutely stretched with time, 
but to find that time and to be out there devoting that time to God after a full working week and whatever else. And then the tears, when we see the brokenness, it's so much easier to stay at home, reading the word of God, praying and being in our own little cell. But actually, going out into the brokenness of this world and engaging with all those people that God has commanded us to engage with. Yeah. Heartbreaking, really is. When I see the despair and the brokenness of this nation, and it does actually uh, uh, grab me. I know I seem like a heartless person, but uh, it does get me quite often when I go back and I think, there but by the grace of God go I. When we're ministering to those on the street, yeah. the homeless, the drunks, and even those that seemingly have everything well with life. Mm. Some of these people in these lofty houses around us, <laughs> all the financial burdens and struggles that, praise God, I don't have to go through. People are broken. And when you start to delve and peel back those layers, you start to see just that. And I'm praying that even in our assembly, as we take that one or two individuals that we've uh, going to saturate with prayer, God will be touching in such a mighty way over the next week or two weeks. You'll be sitting thinking, wow, whoever picked my name out of that box has been praying so vigorously and mightily for me. That is what's uh, going to happen, I'm sure. So, reaping, reaping with joy. What a privilege to journey and to come alongside those on their journey. And we've seen lots of it in the past few weeks. To lead, or at least alert people to salvation through Jesus Christ. It's all him and his work. Could someone read Romans 10, 13 for us, please? Nice and loud over the assembly. Very simple message, very simple verse. For Romans 10, 13, please. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wonderful. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone and everyone. The hundred, no, the thousand, sorry, no, hundred, isn't it? A hundred for each and every saint in Redditch to Reach. As we know, not all of them go out and proclaim it. So the burden becomes a little bit more. The work becomes a little bit more. A thousand, ten thousand for each one of us here. How will we reach them? Everyone and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will and shall be saved. Now, some of you know, in September, I'm aiming to get into all the schools and proclaim and profess and give the word of God. That's an easy way for me to possibly reach 10,000. The word of God going into those hands, the eagerness with your prayer will ripple through those households. Now, what a punch that would have in this town. Wow. Easy way of reaching 10,000 if you're all praying for that to move and God's word to touch. But eternal life, that promise of salvation, we have the joy of reaping, throwing our nets out and bringing in the catch. But then it doesn't stop. We journey with those individuals through their highs, through their lows, discipling and rooting them into the Word of God, into fellowship and into service. Those that just sit passively in a church, I'm past it. I've had enough of it. I really am. I've been there, you know, I've been in churches where you're not allowed to serve. No one here is in that place. Everyone play such a strategic and influential part in building God's kingdom and extending God's kingdom in the week. I'm looking out, I can't see any one of us that isn't engaged fully in ministry and 
leading many to Jesus Christ. And if you are sitting here thinking, oh, God's stirring something, God's telling me to do this, God's telling me to do that, come to us at the end. We'll build a team around you, we'll pray for it, and we'll commission it, and we'll send you out. But the harvest, revival, revival of the individual, praise God, the family, the street, the town, the nation, and the nations. We're blessed to have Jeff with us today, and of course some of you know some of the lineage, some of the history of Jeff, knowing me since I was born. Do pray for him. Now, Dad but, and I used to do school assemblies. That's it. I was just coming on to that. It's wonderful to have all those children. Wonderful. They're all there. Yeah, yeah. All those young people. Marvellous. Yes. And <laughs> an area changed by a faithful few, saturated yes. in prayer. The testimony is there. Going round, knocking on people's doors, inviting them to all the things that we're doing in the week. That was the bread and butter um, success. Yeah. But God touched a whole generation in that part of Birmingham. And we still see those ripples, those gospel ripples, transforming individuals. The church, because we need new life. We need new inquirers that are so hungry and so excitable, like little young little dogs yapping at your feet, <laughs> young little children, inquisitive, hungry and wanting to learn more. It gears up the church, it excites and it's vibrant and the community. It just ripples and spills out and then it's every strata of society. Yeah. When people see the change, the old turning into the new. Praise God. Right. And finally, the workers. The workers. And I look at you all. Hard. Battle hard and saints in front of me. We are very few. But let me ask you the question. Where do we need workers. We're putting on lots of things in the way and God is touching and we're seeing God multiply and blessings in that. But where do we need workers as a ministry and a church moving forward? Yes. Let me ask you the question and I alluded to it previously. <clears throat> what is God calling you to in this place? In this town, in this nation, and what is God birthing in you? You know, there's so much latent potential in the church. And uh, over the coming weeks, we may be having partnership with other churches uh, that are coming on board with what we're doing. And we're aiming to just saturate each and every saint, encourage, mobilise, and get them out. None of us should be passive. Um, this goes out virally, not towards here. None of us should be passive bums on a seat. And yesterday, David alluded to some of the fellowship that we had and some of the conversations of people just being nudged and tickled by God to take a step and move into new fields of ministry. And the opportunities, the harvest is ready, plentiful, bountiful. But the workers, the shirkers, shall I say, the shirkers that go off to be a bum on a seat, sit at the back of a church and do nothing with their gifts, their talents and their skills. And we were expecting many more people today but shirkers that have gone to just, and I don't mean the ones that we're praying for, shirkers in general, shirkers to just go and lightly sit on their hands idly and waste what God has ordained for them. But more importantly, those ripples, without those people throwing that stone 
in the pond, the ripples cease to take hold. The people that are waiting to hear the gospel through each and every one of us, we need to step out and throw that stone in the pool and allow those ripples to take hold. So I'm going to ask, as a response, if you feel stirred by any of this today, I'd like you to stand. Maybe you're not. We're serving very faithfully in this church. But stand yeah, for me. And if God has laid anything on your heart, I'd like you to stand and just share for 10, 30 seconds what God is calling you or you think the church to be doing. And we'll pray and commission yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. Well, as David knows, many years ago we used to knock doors in the early 80s, but bring it up to the present day. My biggest frustration is when I'm uptown, I'm meeting a lot of people, homeless people. Yeah. I've been there, done it. Yeah. You know, so I can relate to a lot of these, these guys. My biggest frustration, not just talking about Jesus, but when they get saved, yeah. where do they go? Yeah. Because exactly. the problem is, that's it. oh, you like that idea? Oh, we don't. They don't say, yeah, yeah, but they get the the the, the rejection. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the love's not there. Yeah. So the love of Jesus saves them, but the church is, yeah, oh, yeah, you've got a problem. Yeah, yeah. and that's my frustration. Okay. Yeah, so that, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, that's well, it's been that way for a long may time. Ask, yes. May I ask, when we see a problem, do you see a solution? The solution is Jesus. Yeah. Well, because, I know. Because, because, as you said, the, 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 the acceptable love of Jesus is the great the body, the but, the but the church rejects them. But then you said the solution is Jesus. But I'm getting confused. Yeah, but, about well, the problem, the, is, the problem is, the problem is, it's the fact that they need practical support. Yeah. And it's whether that's there in that particular church or something. Yeah. You've got to have the practical. Okay, so how so how somebody you comes up and says, I want to know about Jesus. I'll be my kids quick and say, do you want to do it? We'll talk about it. How do we show Jesus right. to people? What I'm going to ask is if yeah. that conversation could take out place over uh, refreshments, because okay. it's valid, but I just wanted that minute. And I just want to say to that, we uh, encountered a chap the other day. The town centre completely failed, didn't have any provision, and there's a stirring in what we're doing tonight in the partnership church i won't mention it on the camera but if you're with us for the gospel service tonight yeah that individual uh showed me a youtube video um I, well i will say this on camera of something called the malachi project and it birthed out of a young child giving five pound and having a heart for a homeless person taking it to said church ministry and they developed a 42 pod living accommodation for 42 individuals and so bespoke anyone can youtube that malachi project and i think because i've been yeah. praying since yeah. last week as have the individual that we need people that have been there done it yeah. bought the t-shirt has a heart for it and wants to say well, when i was 19 yeah. dad didn't know me but he heard me talking to somebody at the bus stop at master center back in 1983 he said are you uh, he said, I've been to talk to that person about Jesus. He said, yeah, I got saved in Birmingham. And when I got saved in Birmingham, it wasn't like I went out to the front I asked Jesus to come in after hearing this guy's testimony. Yeah. Who was going to commit suicide. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, if you're real, Jesus, yeah. I want to know you. Yes, yeah. yeah. absolutely. He, he came into me, I went out that church, and every person I met on the way back out, they ready to tell them about, about Jesus. Yeah. You know why? Because I couldn't help you. Absolutely. Praise I God. And I want to say that is the demarcation of a saved person praise god and i love it that you just said within the congregation god ministered god touched as i believe he can and still does today god never changes hebrews 13 he to absolutely praise god and yeah. the zeal and the encouragement that you've been just today and the hope that we can re uh, respond later tonight by birthing or starting that process so anyone else any other 
thing that God has laid on your heart? Because I didn't know Gary was coming today. Praise God for him. He's been there for a long time. He's been Good. frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Boy, the church. Absolutely. And Jesus has Jesus his biggest problem when he, when he, when was he the church. Was the church. Yeah, the institution, just, yeah. Just, uh, just going back Praise to, God. Just going back to the lad that, you know, we met the other day. Uh huh. And, up to the night and actually sometimes you're not sure whether you're doing the right thing but you, you take a risk yeah um and unfortunately we, we, we i took him in for the night and he was he, he was a good lad he got he'd be very very well mannered but he obviously got real problems and he um we took him up to um a meeting didn't we in the town mm, on, the, yeah. on thursday and uh, we, we did all we could but sadly when he went down to the council looking for help he was hanging around a long, long time. No one did anything with him or for him, and he just went. Two days wasted, basically, by yeah. council. And really, to be quite honest, we don't know where he is now, but there's a lot of people like that, so they do need practical there's, support. There's a guy up town that I've seen for a couple of years, and yep. I, I, I talk to him from that from time to time, and he's got a mental health problem because he's walking around going, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, I've spoken to him a few times, yeah. but he's on that particular individual who I know is very hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what his internet, but he's he's reaching out. Yeah. And I want to be able to say, come on. Yeah. yeah. And this place, we I, I pray, and I think I can say this for each and every one of us, we would welcome. Yeah. And tonight would welcome. So actually there's two expressions straight away that we he's ready to receive this new life. So praise God. So thank you for that. And we'll, uh, we'll take that further. I've never heard of Malachi. Thank no, you yeah. Sharing. Google it, yeah. Well right. worth it. Because I, th- I think homeless people, and I, and I think better. That's you know, good. I mean, how close is a better yeah. to end it? I don't know. It's mainly to do with uh, people's with, with, with drug and uh, abuses, like, you know, uh, misuse, drugs, drinking, soul, gambling. But they, they do have a great amount. Yeah. Whether a, a comfortable church can do with people like that, yeah. better certainly can. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Better, so, and, and they're very strict as well. Very, very strict. Oh, yes, yeah, but yeah. I don't know whether what 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 their attitude to me is. Saying I've got a homeless person here who's just given their life to Jesus. Yeah. Would they accept that? Um, or if that's your work. Yeah, I think that would be our own. Yeah, I, I think, know you said that many particular. Yeah. I think the, the body of Christ, as we've identified, and I'm, I praise God for you Some today. Part of it. Yeah, it's uh, he's letting the the side down. Well, what I'm not saying, yes. and I came, you know, from from Birmingham to Reading. Yeah. And I went to them. I said, Lord, when am I going to go? I have this desire for church. Yes. Supernatural. Because I've never been in a church before. Yeah. Yeah. Really, you know, got interested. You yeah. know, rubbish. Yeah. To what side? Yeah. And I went to this Pentecostal church, but the thing was there, they were strict, but if you if you slipped up, yeah. you were booted, sort of, you were treated yeah. harshly. Like and also, it was a situation where you, you, you felt like everybody else was like on a different level to you. Yeah, yeah got you. Yeah. 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 They don't understand where I've come from. No. And I remember a guy once who was involved in witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. And he got gloriously saved. Yeah. But he went to the church and they didn't trust him, they couldn't, he was struggling with a few things, but they didn't help him. Absolutely. And support him. So he drifted. Yeah. Which is normal. It's going to happen. No, because it says yeah. they will know that we are Christians by our love. Mm. But then, um, what is love? Yeah. Which is kindness, goodness, mm-hmm. gentleness. You know, so what is love? It is those things. It's and amazing. it's how we manifest that maybe it got paid out, but it's also that they will know we are Christians by showing those things. I always think that that's So we, we, yeah. have, we have a responsibility that yeah. freely we have received, freely we should give. If, and Jesus said, if, mm-hmm. if you love me, you love me. Yeah. He also said, the whole world, whoever it is, wherever yeah. they are, will know that you are my people, disciples. By the love you have for one yeah, and another. And yet we choose not to show it because we sit up. Well, we're we frustrated that it's the kingdom yeah. of God if we don't do it. Yeah. What I'll say there, I think we burst something. Conversation, please carry that on because that's positive. By the way, before I start, please. please. Oh. <laughs> She'll make herself known, don't worry. Um, praise God. We're going to move into a time of communion, but do catch Liz over the um, refreshment. And Fiona, 
carry that on because uh, you know you're both sharing a heartbeat, different approaches, but heartbeat. And, what, uh, there's one scripture you spoke this morning. I really enjoyed yeah. this morning. Paul says, "I have sowed, Apollos has watered, God but did. God yeah. gave the growth." Yeah, yeah. praise yeah. God. It's God that gives the growth. Yeah, and I right. think we should ask ourselves: Am I a waterer? Yeah. Am I a sower? I think we're both. It depends what what input the person has had before. Yeah. We ever seen them? Is there yeah. any input at all? Yeah. It's a principle. And it might sound simple and bland. God gave the growth. And he doesn't say that just in the Corinthians. No, no, it's, 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 I think he says it in Ephesians as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think those two roles are separate. The evangelist is the planter. The pastor is the one who can find the water in the Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So the fivefold ministry kicking in and uh, yeah, that but what process is taking place. Is that we all do a bit of pastoring. Yeah. We all do a little bit. We all do a little bit of each of those yeah. things, don't we? Yeah. And we're meant to share share our stuff in. We've said before, haven't we? Uh, we're all called to evangelise, but we might not all be uh, say evangelists with a capital A. But we all yeah, we all work in them. There are five ministry gifts. Yeah. In the Bible, evangelist, pastor, apostle. Uh, but, yeah. but, there are those people who must never, there are those people who are thinking of the specific ministry. Yeah. Some are apostles, some are prophets, some are pastors, some are teachers, and the ones who evangelists. Yeah. Right? And some people are the ministry of private people and yeah. they are delivered. Absolutely. Now we all have to try with people. Yeah. But some people. Ministry is to release people from pain or yeah. out whatever. But some of you manage to have a free to work and people get saved. They will move on. Yeah. And pastors are left there to do the work of watering. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, in some churches, you don't have enough people, so sometimes the pastor will have to do all of them. But those roles in the scriptures are specific. Yeah. And do cut out, but there are people who will never, ever be evangelists. No. They'll preach but till the kingdom yeah. come, a few will get saved. Yeah. Well, well, probably, but some and evangelists, if you tell the evangelists what they want, when he preaches, people get saved. Yeah. yeah. The apostles will build up a church and yeah. they'll move on. Yeah. The prophets will give out word which will come about. Mm. Right? Will come about. The pastor is the one who is there. He is the shepherd. He is the one who is left to develop and to make the people who have been saved and the people in the church to grow in the lives of Jesus. Yeah. And too often we have people who are confusing those. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and and churches. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ephesians 4:11 is it the fivefold ministry? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Ages. Just to yeah. put the reference out there. Possibly. Lovely. Well, now moving to. Teachers yep. are giving the gift, giving the word, and people being able to perhaps see things yeah. and understand things they've not been able to see before. And if there's one thing at the moment that the church needs, it's teachers. Absolutely, yeah, praise God. So the fivefold ministry as well, we're having a nice little salad bowl of uh, theology today, which is good. The anointing. the anointing, yeah. The anointing. Yeah, praise God. That's where the manifestation is. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Ephesians 4.11 does talk about God bestowing those gifts. So yeah, you're right. Absolutely critical. We're going to move now into a time of communion. Uh, We just share the body of Christ uh, as we're commanded to do. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, 23 to 29. Take it directly from the word of God. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner 
will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A person ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognising the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on themselves. Praise God. I'm going to come round now and administer.
Now, we're going to have a time of refreshments in a moment before we close in prayer. And I can see and sense already that there's a number of us that need prayer in the assembly today, I feel. So, I'd just like you to uh, raise a hand only if you'd like us to come and pray for you in a moment over fellowship. Yeah, one. Anyone else? Two. Yeah. Three. So there's three people we're praying for specifically. Anyone else? Right. So in a moment we're going to close in prayer and we're going to do it in the time of refreshments of fellowship. Um, for those that want to get to know each other, pick out that partner list and have a chat with people, have that fellowship and continue what God is doing in this place. And we'll pray for those three people. Um, I'd just like... Um, Sophie, close us in prayer, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, this time together. Thank you for everyone here. Please bless us all throughout the week. Um, help us to uh, listen to you and, and listen to your direction in our lives this week. Uh, thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can I ask you two prayers for 